Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining our webcast. Today, we're going to be discussing our top 10 tips for migrating to S4 HANA, a very exciting topic uh, that, are, uh, that many of you are likely experiencing or are soon to experience. So um, with our partner, Realtek, uh, Easy Software will be walking you through uh, this webcast, and we hope you find it very informative. Along with my co-host, Jan Bayen, my name is Derek Lambert, and before we jump into today's content, I just want to do a brief overview of Easy Software before handing it over to Jan, who will introduce you to Realtek, and then start the content for today's webcast. So Easy Software Group is a company based in Mulheim on der Ruhr, Germany. We have uh, over 375 employees worldwide. We are represented um, in over 60 countries. Our solutions are implemented in over 60 countries. Uh, and that is totaling now almost 13,000 unique implementations. Uh, we have over 100 interfaces to different uh, business applications. And from a, um, from a geographic distribution perspective, we have offices in Germany, Austria, Turkey, the UK, Singapore, and the US. From a solutions perspective, we have a wide variety of business process optimization and digitalization uh, solutions. Uh, we have traditional ECM and uh, PCM solutions that range from contract management, material management, HR and procure to pay, as well as archiving, and document managing. And now I'd like to introduce Jan, your co-host for this webcast. Jan, would you like to introduce yourself and Realtek to our listeners? Good morning. Um, my name is Jan Bayen. I'm the delivery manager for Realtek here in the United States and Canada. Um, Realtek was founded in 1994 by four consultants that worked for SAP. They were basis consultants and they started uh, Realtek literally across the street from SAP in Waldorf uh, and have been there until like a few months ago when they moved their headquarters. They came to the United States in 1998. It's the same year that they um, went public uh, on the German stock exchange. Um, and uh, in that same year, uh, 1998, um, after SAP um, released the OSDB migration toolkit, uh, Realtek was the first company to take uh, a company through the OSDB migration process uh, and went live with it. And it was a great success. Uh, since then, we have done over a thousand and we have never failed. Uh, we have about 2,200 um, customers worldwide um, and we are in five countries currently. Um, Germany, obviously, uh, the U.S., um, New Zealand, um, Japan, um, and uh, Singapore. Um, we are purely technical consultants. Uh, we, uh, at the moment that you say I need to do order to cash, anything functional, um, we will bring in a partner, but that is not our forte. So the company does two things. There is the consulting side and there is the software side. Uh, on the consulting side, um, we are known in the marketplace for OSDB migrations and with that for upgrades and enhanced packs and all that that comes what it means to be an SAP basis consultant. Um, since the arrival of SAP HANA a couple of years ago, we have been certified um, for SAP HANA uh, and provide services around that. Um, with the arrival of uh, cloud solutions uh, for SAP, we have helped many customers migrate either off from their premises to the cloud or from their colo to the cloud or a mixture thereof. And as part of our services, the last one is managed services. Uh, we provide pure basis services to your organization if that's something that you need. Um, you, uh, these are longer term engagements where we basically become part of your um, basis team. On the software side, um, we make a number of products, uh, around one around uh, change management and transport management, um, N plus one um, landscape synchronization, um, assessments of um, your environment to get ready for uh, HANA or S4 HANA migration, uh, interfa and interface management, uh, which helps, especially when you have many, many uh, interfaces in and out of SAP to manage and uh, control and um, those. 
So why would you pick Realtek? I mean, there are many consulting companies out there. Um, the interesting thing that sets us apart is that A, we are experts in this. We were the first one to do it. We've never failed. We are really, really good at it. Uh, and we literally have decades worth of experience. Um, the last two decades since the uh, migrations have become a thing. Uh, and because we're only um, focusing on the technical part, um, we do not get distracted. This is what we're good at. And um, we um, can deliver uh, high quality results um, using um, top tier um, consultants. So what is new with SAP? Where has it been and where is it going? So um, back in the day, um, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, the thing were mainframes. And then in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s, the PC, um, the Apple uh, II came out. And that basically was a uh, enormous revolution that took place. Uh, and SAP was part of that revolution um, when in 1972 they launched R2, which was a mainframe based um, client, um, application. And it was an enormous success. Then they, in the 80s, there was this new technology, uh, and I'm dating myself here, um, called client server technology, which, which was based on Unix servers and relational databases. And SAP created the next version of R2 and called it R3. Um, and that was, again, a great success. And um, they had the foresight of being what was, you know, again, two decades ago, Y2K compliant. And so um, they, again, ran like wildfire uh, through all industries globally. Um, since then, we have moved um, from being on-premises to the cloud, and we now talk a lot about big data. Um, you know, suddenly you have basically a supercomputer in your hand, and that you know provides new opportunities. And SAP has done that, has tapped into that. And then the next thing that is coming um, is machine learning, AI, uh, blockchain, and all those you know cutting-edge technologies. And part of that, to leverage that and to integrate that, uh, are the is basically at its core is SAP HANA because it allows you to bring all that knowledge uh, together and um, leverage those uh, new emerging technologies. So, you know, technology is great and wonderful, but it's, you know, there's also, you have to, you need a business reason. I mean, it has to do something for you. And if you look here at this chart, you will see that over uh, the last couple of decades, um, the automation that computers have brought have basically reduced the number of repetitive tasks that your workers are doing. And in the 80s, 90s, you had this concept of a knowledge worker, which was probably a little bit too early. But by removing a lot of the repetitive tasks, your employees uh, can now focus on more high value tasks. And this basically is starting to uh, expedite this removal uh, of repetitive tasks with the coming of machine learning and AI, which opens up uh, all kinds of new uh, services and products that you would never thought of that AI and machine learning and blockchain uh, can provide for you and allow your, uh, your, your employees to focus on that and ask questions uh, of the data that, they, that your organization has. So the idea of the intelligent enterprise is visibility. One of the, the beauties of SAP HANA is that you're basically getting an, an, a Google experience. You ask a question and the answer comes back almost immediately. This is the same idea for HANA. You ask a question of the data and the answer comes back and then you can tweak it and you basically start to get into a conversation with your data, um, which is a totally different experience. In the mainframe days, you ask a question, you had to wait a night to get an answer. Uh, and then if the next question, you have to wait another day, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot slower. This is much more interactive. And SAP HANA provide that, provides that capability. And so you are able to respond quicker to changes and you, with the coming of AI and machine learning, the uh, application itself can provide insights into your existing data. Now, having said that, data becomes very, very important. Uh, so if you have bad data, uh, you get bad answers. So, you know, just like it was in the 60s and 70s and 80s, you know, garbage in, garbage out, it still holds true. So when you do this migration, 
um, to uh, S4 HANA, you need to have a good look at your data and clean it up. So SAP HANA um, has been around now for eight, nine years. Um, it came out uh, in 2011, and it, its main distinction is that it is in memory. Um, what does that mean? It literally means that all your data is in memory, and that gives you speed. As we all know, accessing memory is a lot quicker than finding it on a disk and bringing it to memory and then displaying it. This is straight from memory. Um, but it requires a lot of memory, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, since then, uh, it went from straight S, uh, SAP for HANA uh, to what is now S for HANA, S um, being uh, standing for simplify. And we went from R to S and from three to four, um, uh, which is a tip to uh, Space Odyssey. Um, anyway, the, um, the interesting thing is that the, the data set got got simplified, the user experience has totally changed to Fiori, um, and um, on top of that, um, SAP has basically modernized its business processes. So the thing, and I will re repeat this a couple of times, this is more than a simple upgrade. Um, this is not just a typical technical upgrade. There is a functional piece to it that you should not forget. It's actually more important than the actual technical upgrade. So, as you've probably heard, um, the deadline is January 1st, 2026. That seems far away. That's about seven years away. Um, the thing to remember is it is not. Um, the issue is that um, there are 40,000 others that have to do the same thing in that seven year time frame. So, if you wait too long, all the experts will be busy and they will be very busy. And so, it'll become very difficult to get experts that are experts in your industry or in, for your company uh, to do the project for you. So it is very important, and I will repeat this a number of times, to get ahead of the curve. Um, you know, what does it involve? Um, and, you know, you're starting from, from nothing. So it is probably the first place to go um, is to ask experts, experts like Realtek, to help you ask the right questions. Um, you know, what do you need from SAP? Other places to look are TechEd, Sapphire, your local, local ASUG meetings. Those are places where you will be able to gather information and talk with others that are going through the same process. The other thing that you have to be aware of that if you are currently running SAP, you're most likely not running on HANA and you're most likely not running on a Linux environment. So there's some learning that has to take place. You have to get trained uh, on these new solutions. So, and this, you know, for some of you, this might sound odd, but there are still organizations out there that are running uh, R3, 3.1H, um, R3, 4.6C, and the like. If you are in that boat, um, you have to do some preliminary steps. Uh, you have to upgrade to at least uh, ECC 6.0 Enhancement Pack 0. Um, and so that is going to take some time and effort. You cannot just leapfrog uh, directly from where you are into S4 HANA. Um, if you are a dual um, stack system, i.e. you have ABAP and Java in your system, you have to do a system split. Um, you might still be on a non-unicode environment if you're on 3.1H or 4.6C. Again, these all these things you need to address before you can go to S4 HANA. And then, depending on who you are, uh, you you might want to do it in two steps, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, plan early, and it is for your CFO and your CIO and your CEO and all the, the people in the C-suite. Just saying that you need to go is not is often not a good enough reason um, to write big checks. So just like when you uh, implemented SAP to begin with, you have to, you know, come up, come up and do a study of your business drivers. You have to calculate the cost and the ROI. Um, and so there's hardware discussions and software discussions and maintenance and, you know, how much does it cost, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to build that out and show um, how uh, 
this project will um, lower your cost, what your ROI is. Um, and related to that conversation, um, you might want to do a greenfield or a brownfield. Now, what is a greenfield? The greenfield implementation is you're starting from scratch. It's basically you're doing an SAP implementation from scratch, just like you did 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. A brownfield implementation is that you basically take your existing data, clean them up, and uh, upload them into uh, your S4 HANA environment. There is not a right answer or a wrong answer. It really depends on your organization. Um, and so, again, in your planning, uh, talked uh, before, this is one of the things that you have to look at. There are companies that are putting out this thing called Bluefield, and then there's, I recently heard there's an old field solution, um, but I will not bore you with that. So, because S4 HANA is complex, it's not easy. It's just like, you know, you did SAP uh, the first time. This is not something you do on a rainy Sunday afternoon. You have to build a roadmap. It's like, how do I get from where I am to where I'm going? Um, and, you know, as you did before, it's like you start with the end goal um, and then you work your way back. Uh, so you develop a timeline. And a good time to start thinking about this is, okay, I have to upgrade or replace my hardware. My hardware is getting old. Now, this probably will cause you to have a conversation about, hmm, are we going to the cloud? Does that make sense? Or do we go to the cloud partially and keep things on-prem? Or do I get rid of on-prem and go to colo and the cloud? And all these different combinations, you have to work that out. And again, it's gonna take some time. Uh, talk to a lot of vendors, talk to SAP, uh, go to conferences um, and and all that. And then um, probably the last major thing, which we talked about a little bit before, is does my SAP environment meet the requirements? Uh, and if not, that you have to build into your roadmap. Now, here's an interesting thing. Um, SAP HANA um, pricing is different um, than what you're used to. The pricing is based on your memory consumption. And your memory consumption is based on how much data you put in it. And since SAP HANA licenses are not free and Linux servers are not free, especially if you're talking you know, with large amounts of memory, they are not inexpensive. Um, it becomes very important to shrink uh, your data, uh, your data set. And so here is where easy, easy software can help you with archiving. A lot of organizations do not have archiving strategies in place, so don't feel bad if you don't have one. Um, it is, for most organizations, an afterthought. And so, but now SAP kind of forces this on you, and you need to really, really think about this. It's like, how do I shrink my data? And one place to start is to look at uh, Easy Software's uh, archiving solutions. So, Jan, I'm just going to jump in for a second before we proceed. Um, so, a lot of good stuff here so far. Um, I just want to recap a little bit uh, for the folks who are watching today. So, uh, we're not even halfway through our presentation, and there's already quite a bit to digest here. Um, so, it's easy to understand uh, how folks can become overwhelmed when they're beginning to conceptualize a migration of this magnitude. Uh, and it's no wonder uh, that with all the moving pieces that are involved, that the topic of archiving can frequently fall off the radar. Um, so as Jan said, uh, Easy Software uh, has traditionally been an archive software solution. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, thousands of customers around the globe continue to utilize, utilize our solutions to reduce their SAP uh, database footprint. Uh, however, many organizations continue to archive directly in SAP, and the implications for doing so in the context of S4 HANA uh, present a variety of challenges, not the least of which is cost. So for some companies, the supposed hurdles uh, for data archiving have simply been too onerous. Some have feared that uh, their access to data history will be lost. Others are cautious of creating capacity bottlenecks in IT. And some are simply unfamiliar with which types of documents are relevant for storage and which aren't. Um, instead, uh, traditionally, uh, many companies have simply increased their hardware budget 
uh, or uh, they need new physical storage to cope with their growing volumes of data. Uh, however, as Jan mentioned, and this is the important part for the folks uh, who are listening today, with the new business suite on HANA, this approach simply does not work anymore. So, choosing a dedicated uh, archiving strategy outside of SAP uh, is mainly for technical benefits but it has significant cost effects. And Jan mentioned this, but defite, despite falling prices, um, main memory is still significantly more expensive than hard disk storage. Uh, so the data transformation to S4 is indispensable for a smooth transition, and it represents a key factor for risk assessment of the transition. Uh, so regardless of the chosen procedure, as Jan mentioned, greenfield, brownfield, bluefield, or any other type of field, uh, the best way to think about this is to remember that the smaller the amount of data stored in the database, the easier the transition and the lower the effort and risk on the migration and the overall project. So this is just a, a simplistic visual of the life cycle of data uh, from its point of creation through its life cycle and ultimately its deletion. Uh, and as you can see, residence in the archive state is the primary amount of time spent of the data throughout the life cycle process. With ArchiveLink and ILM, SAP offers standardized interfaces for data archiving and information lifecycle management. To ensure maximum security and quality, these two interface technologies are part of a product certification for NetWeaver and S4HANA. The archiving strategy is based on checking the actual data required. Reporting mechanisms provided by SAP are included and a set of rules that can be used to store data and documents on archive systems uh, are available once or periodically. Easy for SAP is a SAP certified add-on for information lifecycle management in the areas of data archiving, extraction and storage, as well as system shutdowns. Customers get seamless, fast access to all data. Easy offers archive solutions for SAP ERP and S4HANA to handle very large amounts of data. We've partnered with Realtek to complement their solutions offerings and to offer a robust and reliable archive solution to help customers complete their journey to HANA at a fraction of the cost of traditional software providers and without sacrifice of te technical or operational benefits. Thanks, John. I'll turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you. Um, I hope that was helpful and informative. Um, so the next thing uh, is to, you know, you, you developed your roadmap, and now it's time to um, create a project plan. And this is just like you did um, for an upgrade or your initial SAP project. Develop a plan. It's like, what are the steps? And here listed are kind of the high level steps um, that you will uh, need to consider uh, to go to S4 HANA. Uh, again, um, this is uh, important. Uh, again, it gives your the people in the C-suite an idea of how long it's going to take uh, and what is involved. Um, so when you start doing this, um, there are basically two options that you can go through. You can go straight from your ECC 6.0 system to S4 HANA, uh, or you can do a, an in-between step. Um, and the in-between step is, is that you go from ECC 6.0 to ECC uh, Business Suite on HANA. Um, and there might be reasons um, why you want to do it in two steps. I mean, it just adds complexity and it takes longer. Um, but it might be that you believe that what currently is in S4 uh, is not ready for prime time for your industry, and that is a totally legitimate concern. Um, you might be in the middle of uh, another large project uh, in your organization that uh, I like, you know, you're spinning off things uh, or businesses, or you just bought a business. Um, things like that might make you want to do this in, in two steps instead of one. Um, that is, again, it is a business decision and not really a technical decision. So with S4, um, you have to make sure that your um, interfaces work. Um, and it might be that when you move to S4, that some of your interfaces are uh, literally not compatible 
uh, with what they were before. And so you have to spend a lot of testing around this. Um, and besides the RFC connections to your banks and your insurance companies and what have you, um, do not forget um, to like test your printers, your RFC devices, and uh, your um, your check printers, um, because if people don't get their paychecks uh, or you know things like that don't work. People get really really upset. Now this is easy to do when you have you know ten fifteen um, connections or, and you know another fifteen printers. You can do that by hand, but if you have thousands of RFC connections, both coming in and out, doing it manually becomes prohibitive. And so uh, one way to help you with that is use the real tech product called Interface Management 4, which is a product that is certified by SAP uh, to uh, help you uh, with this uh, part of the process. Next, please. I've said it before, um, and it, to, to really you know, drive the point home is that this is not a technical upgrade. It is a lot more. Yes, there are new technologies involved. Uh, SAP HANA will probably be new for you. Yes, it's a relational database, but the fact that it is in memory, it behaves differently. It has different interfaces. Um, it behaves slightly different. Um, you're probably not used to having a Linux environment um, in your data center. Um, and the UI, the user experience, is totally different. It's moving away from um, the SAP GUI to SAP Fiori, um, which is a tile-based, uh, web-based uh, solution, which um, allows you to interact with your SAP environment uh, on your desktop, your laptop, your iPad, uh, your cell phone, and the look and feel is identical no matter what environment you're in. But most important is that besides the new technologies, the most important is that there are new and improved uh, business processes. That is where uh, the real change is. And so um, you need uh, to have your uh, subject matter experts uh, as part of the this whole S4HANA transformation. Uh, and you will probably need to bring in um, one or more consulting companies to help you go through this business transformation process. Okay, so when you run an S4 for HANA transformation project, you will need uh, a team that is a lot more um, than a basis resource. Um, you need people that are experts um, in finance, in your supply chain. Um, there is people that need to remedy your uh, ABAP development. You need trainers, uh, you need testers. Um, so it can become a, quite a large team, um, especially if you have a global company because um, when you roll this out, it will touch everybody and everybody has to be involved and trained and brought up to speed on how S4 uh, is different um, than it, the, your current ECC system is. So because this is complex, uh, you need to find uh, one or more certified SAP partners. Um, and you have to get these people involved early on to you know, figure out the requirements, to figure out where you are, how much um, remediation you have to do to your ABAP code, depending how many SAP mods you made, um, and help you figure out how to plan your project, how to staff your project, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, from a technical perspective, of course, we believe that we as a real tech can help you with that part. And there are other people that can help you with the ABAP and functional parts. And you can go with one vendor or you can go for best of breed uh, each for each uh, aspect of your um, SAP environment. The other thing that will be new um, is that you will have a new operating system in your data center. So get familiar with either SUSE or Red Hat. Um, both of them are certified by SAP to run an SAP HANA environment. Um, so you need to get some training. And after you're done with your training, um, basically get yourself uh, an account on like AWS or Azure and set up a sandbox Linux environment and start playing around. You know, get familiar with it. Install SAP. You know, get a feel for what this is like. Um, because the more familiar you are going going in, 
uh, the easier it is uh, both during the project and after you've gone live. This might sound obvious if you've gone uh, through an SAP implementation, um, but for many of us, that's been 10, 15 years ago, so you've probably forgotten. But it is really, really important to test. And the more testing you do, the, the deeper your testing is, uh, the easier your go live is. Um, and uh, luckily, like you know, 20 years ago, it, Products like HPQC were kind of in its infancy. Now they have become very, very sophisticated products. So make sure that you test. It might be that um, your test scripts have been severely outdated, that you haven't kept up to date with it. So you have to bring those up to date. Uh, if you have automation, make sure that the automation still works. So again, make this part of your planning process. And then um, the thing that gets so often forgotten, and it might seem obvious, but please, please, please test your interfaces, test your printing, test those scanners, because it is horrible when everything works, but you can't send the money out or receive money. I mean, that is re just really bad for your business, or you can't load a truck because you forgot to test an interface. Uh, so the better your interface testing and your, the deeper your the testing of your solution, uh, the easier you go live is really the only tickets that you want uh, during your go live is that people forgot their password. Uh, you don't want to have it that major businesses, business processes are broken. So we can provide uh, some of the solutions, definitely not all of them. Um, we are certified uh, migration consultants. We are um, certified for SAP for HANA and uh, change management. Uh, our change management solution has been certified by SAP and um, we can help you uh, determine roadmaps and part of that roadmap is data archiving. Thank you very much, Jan. Um, so just, uh, just to briefly take a peek here. So uh, both Easy and Realtek, um, as we've mentioned in the beginning, uh, have worked with thousands of customers, large and small, on a global scale uh, in a variety of industries, uh, both within the traditional SAP uh, and non-SAP non uh, landscapes. And here's just uh, uh, a nice visual of some of those customers um, that we have helped um, both from a, uh, from a real tech perspective in migrating to HANA and from an easy perspective of establishing a sound um, document archiving strategy um, that has uh, that has benefited them throughout the years. So uh, just to do a quick recap, so uh, Jan, it, it's clear um, based on your presentation that migrating to S4HANA is not a simple undertaking. And there are many things that the average organization can do to benefit themselves with the time that they have leading up to that event. But one of the things that stands out most to me about the presentation is that despite uh, the variety of preventative and preparedness steps, um, that an organization can take, none of those are accomplished quickly. So as you've said, um, this is not a small endeavor uh, with most businesses taking years to complete the migration. Um, and in order to be effectively prepared, most companies should have already started planning. Um, on top of that, uh, having access to experienced consultants who can walk them through these steps and guide the organization and draw upon uh, prior successful migrations, companies like Realtek um, can help alleviate a lot of the uncertainty and complexity. So um, I'd be interested to know for the folks that are listening today, uh, coming away from this webinar, uh, what are a few uh, pointed recommendations uh, that you would leave them with um, to help them really feel like they've got um, a, a a, a solid plan for how they should be getting ready uh, for this move? Um, the most important thing is um, that the first thing you need to do is to, to basically get yourself educated, uh, like what is involved, like what are the benefits um, that SAP s for hana will provide. Speed alone is not enough. So what are those new technologies going to give you? What are they going to drive? What is this AI stuff going to do for your organization? Where does it will improve your, your business processes? Things like that. Ask that. Make sure that you meet the requirements and then start planning outwards and get help early. Um, don't think that you can do this alone. Um, 
you need help. And so get the experts in early uh, and that will help you plan and get your organization ready. You can build the excitement for it. And uh, from there, uh, it be, they'll make the process of transforming your uh, organization into an intelligent enterprise a, a much easier process. Having said that, it's it's going to take time and a lot of effort. Thank you. So for all the folks listening in today, I think it's clear uh, that Jan and Realtek uh, have a wealth of knowledge and experience um, in this arena. So getting in touch with Realtek, both from an overall uh, S4 migration strategy, uh, as well as uh, conceptualizing a document archiving strategy to help uh, mitigate the challenges of the new S4 HANA uh, licensing model. Um, they they are a fantastic group of folks to work with, and they can do wonders uh, to help uh, make this a smooth and painless transition for your organization. So uh, getting in touch with Realtek would be uh, probably one of the best things that you could do. Uh, so we will be providing contact information coming out of this webcast. But before we go, we, we've actually had quite a few um, folks in the chat, and they've submitted some questions. So with the time that we have left, um, I'd just like to read through a few of these, <clears throat> excuse me, and any that we don't get to. Uh, we'll be sure to follow up with you directly after the webcast. Um, but the first question that we have here uh, is a question for you, Jan, and it, it says, does tiered storage re require a SAP license? Would you answer that? Yes. Um, and the simple answer is yes. Uh, you need uh, to get an SAP. You have to pay SAP a license for that. Now, the having said that, SAP licenses are not free, as we all know, and so SAP wants some money. The good thing is for for this, they want uh, significantly less money than you would need to pay for additional SAP HANA licenses. So what happens after you've archived, you've transformed, you've gone live, now you start doing transactions, and so your database starts to grow. And so with the tiered storage is to manage the size of that memory the, the amount of memory that you're consuming. Uh, so it is important to think about that. Um, basically what it does, it takes the memory, the, the data that is in memory and basically offloads it uh, after a while that you haven't used it and it can be you know six months a year. Um, and then after that, it's kind of in warm storage. And then after a while, it goes to cold storage. You still have access to the data, but it is not in instantaneous as it is when it is sitting in memory. Thank you. That's excellent. Very informative. Now, here's a question that I believe you already addressed, um, but it was asked. So maybe just to, to underscore it again, do, uh, the question is, do we need uh, to clean up data? So maybe just adding a little bit more color on that, Jan. Okay. Uh, yes, you do. Um, and it is important that um, you go through your data um, to make sure that it is clean. Um, and it's literally garbage in, garbage out. And, um, you know, because Organizations that you do business with, you know, get bought, sold, spun off, et cetera, et cetera. So things have changed and you might not have kept up with it. Um, you know, people have moved and you didn't know that they moved. So even things as simple as that uh, can have an impact. But also, you know, is IBM the same as international business machines? And, you know, why do I have two, two records? or can they be collapsed, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff um, you have to look at and clean up. So you, again, there is some activities uh, around master data that you need to do. Absolutely. And uh, it looks like we've got a very inquisitive audience today. And unfortunately, folks, we're not going to have a chance to get to all these questions. Uh, so we will take one more. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll follow up directly uh, coming out of the webcast. Uh, but Jan, last question. Um, the question reads, can you go live in a phased approach? I think you touched on this one, but just, just for clarity's yes. sake. Yes. Uh, if you go in a greenfield approach, um, in, in a, uh, yes, in a greenfield approach, uh, even in the brownfield, actually, um, yes, you can go into phases. So you can do um, finance first, and then you can do um, whatever, sales and distribution, if that's what you want. Um, yes, you can do that. You can go uh, live in a, in a phased approach. Um, and um, again, this is mostly driven by the business. Um, for a lot of organizations, it makes sense to break it up because you get like smaller projects and you can get, get quote unquote quick wins. So it builds confidence both um, 
of the organization in the consulting process, but also um, the people in your organization is like, oh, okay, it worked. It really is different. And so you can, in that respect, create a buzz in your organization about uh, this S4 uh, transformation project. Good that question. Sounds, that sounds great. Yep, definitely doesn't need to be a one-size-fits-all, folks. Um, so uh, like I'd mentioned, unfortunately, um, we're running a little bit short on time, and we do have some questions to follow up with after the webcast. Um, however, uh, on behalf of Jan and myself, uh, we appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy day to join us on this webcast. I, we hope that you found it informative. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you uh, to get a better understanding for where you are today on the path to S4 and what we can do uh, collaboratively between Easy and Realtek uh, to help uh, guide you through uh, the migration thought process. Um, it's a very exciting opportunity, um, but as, as we've stated, it's, it's a lot to consider. So when you have uh, access to um, subject matter expertise, uh, like Jan and his team at Realtek, uh, I think you're, you'll, you'll find yourself in extremely good hands. So um, once again, thank you all for joining us, and we appreciate your time, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.